Good evening and welcome to our first annual State of Schools Address for the School District of Walton County, Florida. I am Sonia Offer, the Director of Human Resources. This evening we are here to share the epic accomplishments and the next steps for our school district. Superintendent Russell Hughes will be providing an overview of our school district and the tremendous growth our district has experienced over the past two years. Prior to this school year, our student population was below the 10,000 student threshold, which allowed for a district advisory council to serve in their advisory capacity for the school district as a whole. As of this school year, Walton County has made history. This is the first year that our district has surpassed a student population of over 10,000. As a result of meeting this threshold, our District Advisory Council has been replaced with individual school advisory councils. But in an effort to keep our community stakeholders informed of the accomplishments across our district, the State of the Schools Address has been established. We again welcome you to this special event and thank you for allowing us to share our accomplishments with you. At this time, we would like to welcome to the stage Reverend Wayne White to deliver our invocation. Mr. White. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Pray. Father, we thank you that for this night. We thank you for this opportunity each of us have to be gathered here tonight, Lord, and we thank you for living in this great country. United States of America that we live in. We thank you, Lord, for the administrative staff, all the teachers, the coaches, every person down to the janitor even, Lord. We thank you for all of the employees of the Walling County School System. And Lord, for their dedication and their commitment to excellence in education. We thank you for our godly leadership that we have in, from our, in our superintendent and others in this school district. We thank you, Lord, as we put you first, we know that you will put us first. God, our goal is to make Walling County School District the number one school district in the state of Florida. And Lord, we know that we're fast on our way. We thank you, Lord, that other districts have already and will continue to look to Walding County for the leadership and want to know what are you doing to make the schools of your district such A-plus schools. And Lord, thank you, God, that we can give them the correct answer and the correct leadership. Lord, and as we follow you, we know God will we'll always go in the right direction and steer others in the right direction. Bless this gathering tonight. Bless every word spoken. And may we hear the heart of our superintendent tonight. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good evening. I'm Mark Gardner, Facilities Director, Walton County School District. And I have the distinct honor and privilege of introducing the next three segments of presenters here, starting with the Junior ROTC Honor Guard from Walton High School that will be presenting our colors. Secondly, introducing my friend and Walton County Teacher of the Year, 2018-19, Ms. Joan Kennett. And thirdly, uh, the singing of our national anthem from Casey Clark, accompanied by Ms. Susan Behrens, choral teacher and student at Freeport High School. At this time, would you please stand for presentation of colors? Mary, colors. Forward. Right. 
detail. Oh, five, eight, raise and colors. Joining me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. State of the Schools uh, event tonight. We're proud to have you here, as Ms. Alford said. And we want to give you just a little bit of uh, a background into what's going on in our schools. In November of 2016, Walton County residents elected Russell Hughes to become superintendent of schools. Mr. Hughes arrived on the job with exciting ideas, a clear vision, and a love for children. During the past 28 months, the district has experienced changes brought about by student growth and increased student achievement. The growth comes as a result in living in beautiful Walton County and having high performing schools. People move to beautiful Walton County because of our high performing schools and we appreciate that. The increased student achievement comes as a result of the hard work of our students, our teachers, our administrators, and support staff. And a third component of Walton County School District's growth and success can be attributed to the leadership, enthusiasm, and motivation of our superintendent. Tonight, as he shares the state of our schools, 
you will see the effect of his dynamic leadership and innovative thinking. Please help me welcome Superintendent Hughes to share the first annual State of Schools. all of you who uh, have gathered here tonight it's a special night for us um, um, uh, thanks for the vision of uh, Ms. Crystal Apple and and the new developed uh, organization of DAC thank you all so much for this opportunity and we want to gather and share tonight what's going on in the Walton County School District and I have the honor and pleasure of, uh, of being the uh, elected leader of, of Walton County School District, but what you need to know is this is done because of the collaborative effort of so many people. You're going to meet many of them tonight, um, and you're going to hear a lot more about what's happening in Walton County that's greater than one person. It is a collaboration. And what you will see, I want to just uh, let you know how uh, this is always about children. Always about children. Has been, forever will be. That will never change. And that's why we do what we do. Our children deserve it. They deserve it. And I'm glad to say they have come to expect it. And we're so proud that that is the case. So before I get started and let you know some of the things we have done, I do want to just introduce a few people to you. Um, I want to ask that um, Meredith, Meredith Ness, will you? Ms. Meredith Ness, she's our new teacher of the year. Also, um, um, okay, Goodman, where's Goodman? I still, oh, it's Miss Goodman, Tammy Goodman, I'm sorry, thank you, Miss Tammy Goodman, our, uh, who uh, does Lego League for West of Funiac as well, uh, and Mossy Head uh, does Lego League, so I want to thank you for that. We also have uh, Paxton Agritechnology FFA uh, teacher, Miss Haley Hayes. Haley Hayes is a student. Daniel, there it is. Thank you so much. We'll hear more about them. You'll see some of the things, and I want you to be able to identify students who are working great things, doing great things in our county, and know who they are. I also want to uh, introduce you, Mr. Greg Garrett, South Hall High School. I want a student representation from all over our county because we have great students from Paxton to South Walton, Vanner Butler Bay, soon to be Doom Lakes, which will be our most easterly school, most eastern school uh, in Walton County. Greg, we did a student roundtable this year with seniors where I called seniors from all over the county uh, together. Uh, we had conversations about what we were doing in Walton County. What's good? What's not so good? Ideas that they have. And um, um, uh, Gary was a part of that. And we're Appreciate that. Greg was a part of that. We appreciate it. Walton High School Junior ROTC, you saw them and their precision that they worked by. I want to say thank you to them. Uh, Freeport Coral Student Casey, you heard from him. And thank you, Ms. Susan Barons, for the accompanying. Uh, Walton High School Culinary is in the back. They have some food that you can make sure you get some before you leave. All right, they prepared that and we were able to start the bistro as principal at Walton High School and they are still functioning and doing great things. Um, so we're, we're proud of them and say thank you. Also, our video on tonight is Miss Christy English uh, and, and the video production team from Walton High School want to say thank you uh, for coming. And then I want to say this, um, you, uh, I want to introduce you to some, some other people who are uh, very personal to me. I won't tell you all our personal relationships. <laughs> But just know they're, they're a special guest of mine and I've invited. You heard Pastor Wayne White uh, do our prayer. People don't know that the first night, the first day, November 22nd, 2016, uh, when I was sworn in at 8.30, at 9.30, I don't even think my board knows this, at 9.30, I had a group of pastors to meet me at the boardroom and pray with me. Um, and they have committed to praying for me uh, for these years. So I'm going to ask Pastor Wayne White he is one of them stand. Pastor Parker from Crestview, dear friend of mine that I met on a school campus in Okaloosa County. These are just, and I didn't want to call all the pastors here, you think we're in church, but these are two representatives who are dear friends of mine 
and commit to praying for me daily. Their churches pray for me, and they are geographically a place among our community that they continue to pray for the Walt County School District. Thank you all so much. Also, I want to ask a um, special friend of mine, um, retired military, Pastor Park is a retired military. Mr. John Bill, will you stand please? He's a, he's a special guest of mine. I won't tell you all the reasons he's a special guest of mine, but he is John Veal, retired military. Uh, he's a person in the community that has high expectations. Great friend of mine. Thank you, Mr. Veal, for coming. Mr. Sh Ms. Charlotte Flint, will you stand, please? This is Ms. Charlotte Flint. She's a special friend of mine and my special guest tonight. Uh, I will say this about her. Her husband was retired military. Was it Colonel? retired colonel in the military and I have a tie in my office that has faces of students on it that uh, Chelsea and Ms. Smith make sure I wear periodically. I have a special place. I'm a very sentimental guy. People like to see my socks. They have some sentimental messages, my cuff lane sentimental messages, and I have a tie that Colonel uh, Flint, uh, that Charlotte gave to me from Colonel Flint that I wear to remind us uh, the importance of why we do what we do. Thank you so much for being my special guest. Mr. Greg Majors, if you'll stand. Very special guest of mine, and uh, he was, I was one of his, I was his principal, his student's principal, a special guest of mine, glad to come tonight. Thank you so much for who you are and what you represent in our community. Also, tonight, I want to ask that our board, my board, will you please stand really quickly? Ms. Smith, Ms. Weingarten, Ms. Kirby, the things you're going to hear tonight, um, do know again, it is not from one person. It's because, and I said this, the second meeting, I believe, that I'm committed to um, doing all we can to be the best in Walton County, uh, and it's because we're going to have the best board in Walton County, in the state of Florida. And I would suggest, a little bit biased, but we have the best school board in Walton County, it's because of these people who support us very well. Thank you so much. Um, also, I want to ask all of my principals to please stand. Uh, there's no doubt that these are the people with the most difficult jobs in the county and in the state. Uh, and I know we have a lot of challenges in, uh, say, Florida in the school system, uh, in Walton County day by day. But these things that you're going to hear about and see could not be possible if it were not for these principles. So if y'all will, y'all just help me thank the principals. For sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course, I do have a home that I want to be able to be welcomed into tonight uh, when I finish this. So my wife, she, she's a lot behind the scene. This is my wife, Lori, if you'll stand. Thank you so much. And then there are six people who meet with me every Tuesday. Uh, some with smiles and some not with, with not, not as many smiles. Uh, they get to hear the, the direction for the week. The expectations um, and I, I would call it high expectations they call it pressure at times so I'm going to ask my cabinet if you will stand please for a moment Thank you, and then there, I am, I am happily married, uh, and, and, uh, but I have two ladies that make sure that when I'm at work, that they keep me on task. So I want to ask Ms. Smith and Ms. Martin, y'all wave, these are my secretaries, y'all wave at us. My wife calls them my work wives at times, so uh, thank you all, all of you so much, and I hope I haven't forgotten anyone or missed anyone. If I have, uh, please uh, know that it is not intentional. Well, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the state of our school. This is an acronym that we created. Uh, it stands, it is called EPIC. Everybody knows it. I wear a hat everywhere I go with it on. Uh, this year, and talk about the sentimental value, I have the accent of purple because we decided that we're going to be like royalty to students. So we, uh, we try to highlight those things. It is an acronym that stands for excellence, professionalism, innovation, and collaboration. And what you will see tonight is evidence of these components of what we do every day in the Walton County School District. We call it EPIC. We now call it the Walton County Way. Well, here are reasons that we are to celebrate. The reasons we're to celebrate, uh, Pastor White, Pray and during this time of prayer, talking about a mention an A plus district. Uh, for the first time since 2014, we are an A plus district. 
There are 20 districts in the state of Florida that are A+. Uh, there are 67 total districts in the state of Florida, and we are one of the 20 who are A+. Listen to this. We rank number 8 and 11 in performance and assessment. The highest ranking ever that we've accomplished in the state of Florida, in Walton County, are ranked number 8 and number 11. And uh, we are full speed ahead in getting to number 1. That's what I told our staff the first time we met in the Walton County School District. We want to be number one. Our board says it. Uh, we have a plan, a strategic plan that's designed to make us number one. Uh, we're moving quite expeditiously now, and we hope not to slow the pace towards making, uh, uh, making sure that we're number one in the state of Florida. When you talk about number one, look at this. What you will see is 21 different assessed areas in the state of Florida. Walton County School District ranks in the top 10 in 50% of these areas. So we have 20, 21 or 22, I think it's 22, assessed areas in the state of Florida, and Walton County School District ranks in the top 10 in half of those assessed areas. Listen to this. We rank number one in Algebra 1 last year in the entire state of Florida. Not a, not a district in the state of Florida. <laughs> not one district in the state of Florida uh, ranked higher than us last year in Algebra 1. Listen to this. In July, I was standing in Orlando in a conference, and the grades came out, and it came out that we were number two in Algebra 1 in the state of Florida, and St. John's County was number one. I found their superintendent, tapped him on the shoulder as he was on the phone, and said, enjoy it for one year, we're coming back after you. <laughs> God, you can charge it to my pride, but we want to be number one in every area, and we are number two right now in Algebra 1, and we're so excited. We rank in the top 10 again in 50% of the assessed areas in the state of Florida. Okay, This is the grade ranking, where, and you can see the, our progression. <coughs> In 2015, we ranked 35. 2016, ranked number 12. 2017, ranked uh, uh, number 12. And now we rank number 11. <coughs> when it comes to graduation rate, we want students to graduate. That's our ultimate goal. Every child, hear me, every child to graduate. My principals, my parents, my teachers can tell you a saying that I have, and my cabinet had, knows this statement, there is no acceptable rate of casualties. Hear me well. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what exceptionality they are. Every child should graduate from the Walton County School District that enters this school. It is our commitment. It is our responsibility, and we shall do it. We don't take excuses. We don't take excuses, and we have not taking excuses. Look at this graduation rate of principals. You can sit up tall when you see these numbers. When I came in in, in, uh, in, in, in 16, our graduation rate was 77%. We put in a plan, we reviewed it, we looked at it, we had a plan of get it right, and we look, make sure the day was right, make sure we knew where children were going, where they were coming from, the cohorts where they were in, and it grew by 5%. We increased by 5% the first year. Again, last year we increased another 5%. So since 2016, we have increased our graduation rate by 10%, which is unheard of. And you can just peruse these schools and these principals, 82% uh, uh, Freeport High School, uh, Paxton, uh, South Walton High. Look at that. There is not a school that is not a public school that their graduation rate went down. Not one. Seaside, uh, that is one of our charter schools. Uh, we have a great relationship with our, high, uh, and our, our, our charter schools. They went down a little bit. Um, I don't have the responsibility of oversight for those principals directly, but I meet with them when I evaluate my principals in the fall and the spring. And they know our, our ideas, they know our expectations, and we want that to remain 100%. Okay, um, um, Walton Academy, you see 
they have improved. That is one of our charter schools, the Austin Char Charter School. They have improved by 6%. I called uh, Mr. Smith and talked to him about this. Ms. Queen Ann is here, one of the teachers there. Uh, great work that they're doing at Walson Academy. Listen to this, the high tide rise raises what? All ships, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, so we want to make sure everybody in the school district, whoever, every child has um, uh, every child has an opportunity to graduate from uh, school wherever they are. Walton Intensity, that is a school we created. It's a new school that is housed uh, directly south of where you're sitting, adjacent to us. Uh, we have right now 65 students. These are students that may have some challenges uh, matriculating in a regular setting. Many choose to go there. Some are assigned there. Listen to this. 88% of those students graduated last year. 88%. The real number was 8 out of 9. Our first graduation graduating class. And our board worked so diligently. <laughs> Increased attendance. Listen to this. Our students, our students are coming to school. Uh, now, our teachers would say they are not. Okay? Because they want them there every day, all day, missing nothing. But looking at our data, our, our attendance school year 16, 17 was 91, 17, 18, 91, 91.7, and 18, 19, 92.61. We had a decrease in discipline referrals, in discipline referrals. Um, 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 we're, the, the first semester of the uh, 17, 18 school year, we decreased the referrals by 50%. That has always been kind of one of the, uh, my pet peeves. We don't want you in trouble. We're going to, if you're in trouble, we're going to correct your behavior. And that's one of the things we're doing. So the re referrals are being reduced. Here's my caveat, and I'll make no excuse about it. Our exposures are going up. My board knows this, and they stand with me on this. If you sell drugs, if you bully children, if you are violent, you will not go to a regular public school in Walton County. You will go to an alternative school. We're doing that. I have to say this number, uh, it is 10 right now, but in the last few weeks it has increased, and we are standing firm on that. Okay? So understand that our expulsions uh, did increase. I make no apology for that. We're going to keep children safe. We're not going to sell drugs in our schools, and we're not going to allow violence okay, to be there. We're going to stand strong on it. Growing with the flow. Um, what you will know is that we have grown um, uh, more than 900 students the past two years. You'll see that in a few moments. But this is South Walton High School, so we want to grow. We have to grow responsibly with our, our ability to uh, house students, and we have to build our capacity. Uh, every, uh, every school in South Walton was over capacity at one time. So we had to make it, we had to build an addition, a 10 classroom addition. We've done that at South Walton. This is a view of it. There are some more pictures and uh, these are some classrooms, ESC classrooms. We were literally having class in closets and locker rooms. We converted closets and locker rooms at South Walton High School and that's why we had to build the expansion. Uh, we have a health science lab. It is state of the art. And uh, those that can go in, uh, make sure you check in at the secure lobby. You can get in and see the quality that we're building schools in Walton County. You'll see the hallway, the hallway, and we have some outside classrooms that we built in there to make sure our students were accommodated, and also a secured outside eating area because we're we're landlocked. Uh, at that school, but we're looking at some expandable expansions that we'll be able to do. This is a picture of the new Dune Lakes Elementary School that we're building. Um, we actually, uh, because of state legislation and laws, we had to go and fight to be able to complete this building. And I want you to know this, this is called the Walton County Rule on Walton County Law. Our board tasked me to make this happen. Uh, we got together with some other uh, districts some attorneys and made sure that we were able to build this. There's a restriction on how, uh, as far as the square footage is built, we're now getting that out of legislature. There are bills that are getting out because they did not understand the growth in Walton County nor the, uh, the uh, increase in cost in building buildings that are secure for children. 
Uh, it, this, this new school is opening uh, 2019. We are moving Bay Elementary School. Um, they're going to be doing legs. We have restructured. Our fifth graders have been going to school uh, in middle school, Emerald Coast Middle School in the South End. We're now putting them back in elementary school so they can be around students who are of their age, closer to their age. So this is happening in 2019, 150,000 square feet, uh, 1,000 student stations. It's going to be K K-5. It is energy efficient. It is beautiful. Totally secure campus. Uh, all kinds of technology that we're adding, a maker's lab, not necessarily a uh, library or media center, but it's a maker lab to make sure that we are allowing children to be creative and innovative. Student growth, here's a, little, here's a picture of student growth. 2017-18, um, these are the schools that had the largest increase. Mossy Head Elementary, Mossy Head Elementary School, the largest in increase. We did some control movement there, that's a 39.8% increase. Emerald Coast Middle School, 114 students. 13% increase. Freeport High School, 47 students. This past year, Mr. Tripp Hope graduated his first um, uh, cl graduating class over 100 students. I think it was 101? 100, and this year will be 116. We're 100 last year, we won 16 this year. So we have 12.1% increase. You know that we are growing and what you, what you, I don't know if I have this on here, but every school in our county except one because of control, control, the control that we get, control growth grew. Student growth 18, 19, these are the, these are the schools that grew the most. West of Phoenix Elementary was 6.4%, Freeport Middle School 10.4%, South Walton High School 13.6%. We are watching Freeport very, very closely because we have a lot of growth there. Uh, we're in talks. Uh, Hammock Bay has given us some acreage. We're looking at that. It is in our five-year strategic plan. We're watching it very, very closely. Freeport Elementary is over capacity now, and we want to make sure that uh, we continue to grow responsibly. So we have approximately 438 more students in 1819 approximately 438 more students this year. So over the past two years, our district has grown by approximately 872 students, which is a 9.9% .9 increase from May 2017. First time ever, as Ms. Offer did in her introduction, we're over 10,000 students. Now listen to this. What you will not see is that we, after, in October, because of Hurricane Michael and his uh, devastation, we have 200, more than 200 students move into Walton County. We have 167, the last count I know, that have remained with us. We had to do some adjusting. Hear me, not one teacher complained. Not one teacher. Not only did not one teacher complain, but these principals made it happen. Assistant principals made it happen. We had some people go, what are we going to do? Or we got kids coming from other places to our school. I said, yes, and we're going we're gonna to host them with pride. We're going to host them with understanding because it very well could have been us. But not only that, not only that, if I could just allow you to take a glimpse into the heart of Walton County students and teachers, we had busloads of products, items, materials, school supplies going to our neighboring counties to let them know that we're a county of love, we're a county of understanding, and that we believe in humankind. So I just want to say that to you all. Those numbers are not represented here. Um, Bay County lost 2,400 students, uh, some 400 teachers. The last time I talked to Bill Husfield, uh, we're seeing some of, those, some of those come our way. We don't know what's going to happen. Next year, they're going to have to close some schools. Okay, so you don't see these numbers represented here, um, but I wanted to talk about the heart of uh, those who house our students. This is a quick view of the numbers uh, of students in our, uh, in our county and at different schools. Our virtual school, you look at that, we have a virtual school. We have over 500 completed courses for the first semester. That's 16 full-time students, but we have over 500 completed courses 
in the first semester. So we are looking at getting over 800, at least 800 completed courses. Ms. Michael Harrison, uh, uh, Chandler, uh, looks, uh, is over that. We're looking at over 800, 800 uh, completed courses by the end of the year. Progress on purpose. These are some things you want to know how we're doing it. This is how we're doing it in Milwaukee County. What we have is what we call a view visit. It is, it is um, uh, where we are uh, visiting schools, uh, we're looking at what they are doing, we're looking at their progress, we're looking at their data. They have data that they uh, present to our school district. We're in schools for support. We're in schools for review. Okay, um, so we have district level leaders, school principals, school assistant principals, instructional coaches that come. And this is how we tier it. If you're a C or D school, you're visiting four times a year. Uh, not for I got you moments, but for support to review your data and to assist where needed. If you're a B school, three visits, A schools get two visits. The view format, very simple, uh, review school improvement plans, review school data, we observe in classrooms, uh, we give SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, we do those, and we provide those results to the superintendent and the principal, and we sit down, and I talk to these principals and find out what they need that they're not getting from the school district, and we provide those things. Technology, we are cutting edge in technology. Uh, we have a five-year computer refresh on all computers within the district. When computers are five years old, we remove them um, and put, uh, put brand new computers in there, in, in classes. Uh, we have installed a digital panel in every classroom within the district, a large digital panel that assists with instruction in every classroom in Walton County. Uh, we completed a fiber installation and, and it has increased the bandwidth by five times, five-fold, without increasing costs through collaborative effort with the county. And we saved our taxpayers more than $2 million doing so. When it comes to finance, listen to this, we are, we are being responsible with the taxpayer dollars. Um, we have sufficient cash, cash reserves to operate without a tax anticipation note for the second consecutive year. We, we're being fiscally responsible. Uh, we have a protected fund balance that increased substantially over the past two years. Listen to this, people want to talk about uh, district office or district level being uh, top heavy. We are not. Here's a fact. Our district administration only carries 2.7% of our budget. 2.7%, and that's why they call it pressure. I'm really working them way. wear a lot of hats, a lot of hats. So 2.7% of the total budget, which is very, very uh, unequal to um, other surrounding districts. We're, we're advancing our HR department with Skyward, where all of our um, potential employees will have access uh, to HR applications, copies of checks, W-2s, uh, online. We have an A1 credit rating, highest credit rating we've ever had in Walton County School District. <laughs> Food service, I am really proud of this. Listen to this, our children are eating lunch and eating breakfast. And we're glad of that. Now listen to this. It's kind of strange, but I'm really excited about this. Current school year breakfast average daily participation count increased by 3.3%. Current school year lunch average daily participant count increased by 6.9%. As a result of strategic actions, food service, listen to this, food service um, uh, had a positive fund balance of $130,000 at the end of the 17-18 school year, first time ever. First time ever did we not have to take out of the general fund and um, uh, put money towards food service. Food service had an overage of funds and we're proud of that. And right now we are on a trend to finish the current fiscal year with a positive fund balance as well. And one of the things I did, I'll tell you this, talk about how'd you do that? Very simple. Ask students what you want to eat. 
I hired Robert Martin. Listen to this. I hired him from one of my favorite restaurants, Bayou Bills. <laughs> and I said, I want my children to participate in our cafeterias like they like I do at Bayou Bills. He said, we'll make it happen. Children are eating, and we're proud of that. Okay? Let me tell you what we did. I put all of these principles on the line, on a call, phone call, conference call. Got all the cafeteria manager on the conference call. And I said, listen, one year from now, I'm going to have to let 18 of you go. I don't want to do that. But we have to because we have to be fiscally responsible. We cannot continue to dip in the general fund to subsidize um, livelihoods of people when we cannot afford it. To cafeteria managers, to principals, we are on, on the hook. Mr. Robert Mark, you are on the hook. You have one year. Mr. Hughes, I am on the hook. We're going to make it happen. They said we can do it. This is what collaboration is. They said we can do it, Mr. Hughes. So we start putting together a plan. We start figuring out what children like to eat. These principals changed their cafeteria, invited students into their cafeteria, and they are eating. And we are now uh, seeing that kind of growth. First time ever we're able to return funds. This is what our cafeteria lines look like now. So Mr. Martin, I wanted to be presentable. They won't eat if it doesn't look good. Guess what? I won't eat if it doesn't look good. <laughs> All right? Let my wife says eat. Okay? Um, but they're eating and we're proud of that. Creating opportunities. School Garden Food Service is partnering, listen to this, school service is partnering with school agriculture teachers to provide, to provide curriculum enrichment to students while supplying our cafeteria with fresh produce. We're going, we're looking at farm to table in our county. Paxton, stand up again, thank you. Paxton is already, how far along are we on our plan today? We're about a month away from our we have planted potatoes, and we're a month away from harvest. So we're going to be able to bring that food that we planted at Paxton. We're doing it also at Walton Middle School. We're looking at expanding it in Freeport Middle and Freeport High School. Uh, we're looking at doing that so that we can grow our own food and provide food on our tables in Walton County School District. And we're also connecting with local farmers. And I don't know if I Local farmers, I'll show you that. We're bringing local produce to Walton County school lunches. This initiative uh, with local farmers provides fresh, healthy, locally grown vegetables to student meals. Uh, provides also a viable market for local farmers. We're connecting with uh, farmers who are close to us that we don't have the cost of travel, transportation, or storage, and it is fresh for our students. Agriculture program, this is the growth we've had. Look at Paxton, 16, uh, 17, 61 students, 69, 17, 18. Right now we have 115 students who are involved in the agri agriculture program. Paxton, Paxton High School, 62. Walton Middle School, 50. We're doing more of an organic growth cycle at Walton Middle School. Mr. Campbell, Mr. Proffitt are over there. They have plants and lettuces and flowers and edible vegetables growing all over the place and it is very very cost effective we got a grant to provide those uh, those stands to do so and it is working very well one of the things we're very proud of and I want you to see this we're very proud of what we're offering in Walton County when it comes to the highest cognitive ability of students in our county okay these are classes that we're offering at Freeport Middle School here it is most of our students most of our middle schools students all over our county can gain five high school credits before arriving in high school. It's phenomenal. We have, we put in place uh, feeder pattern meetings where these principals from feeder patterns walk uh, the, the, the Funiac area, the Freeport area, and the South Walton area. They get in a room, see what students are getting, see where students are lacking, see where they need to be challenged more, and we devise a plan of their growth. So if we have a fourth grade student that can do hours for one in the seventh grade, we're putting together a plan that they can get what they need and we don't slow their cognitive growth. And it's happening. So take a look at some of the classes at Freeport Middle School uh, with, with the electives. Of course, the drama, the critical thinking, library, uh, intensive reading, of course. There's um, um, Spanish. We look at middle school Spanish. We're doing that. Um, 
This is Freeport High School. Look at the high classes, AP Geography, AP Psychology, AP World History, AP Stats. They wouldn't even let me in stat class. Back then. <laughs> AP Stats, look at here, uh, AP Computers. It's just growing. Look at the CT courses on the end. Those are career and technical education courses where students can get a certificate, put on their resume, show to a potential employer to say, I have these skills and abilities, and they're making it happen. Make sure students are, co are college career ready. Look at this data. In 15-16, in we had 441 students pass a CTE course. Again, that is a course that, that they have some soft skills, they have some technology skills, we have some agriculture, we have culinary, we have all kinds of classes. You'll see some more of those. 441 in 15-16. In 16-17, 569 passed, 786 took them. Look at 17-18. Last year, we had over 960 students pass and receive a career technical uh, certificate for their work. We had over 1,170 students. As you all know, I was selected to be on the governor's transition team, the only superintendent in the state to do so, and he is big on career technical education and STEM instruction. He is big on it. It's going to come down the pipe, and I want to say this, I'm proud that these principals, these teachers, and those who are leading in our district office, they, we are ahead of the game, way ahead of the game. People are coming to make sure, uh, to see what they can adopt from Walton County. Fine arts education. Uh, well, you, well, you will know that we changed the mission statement when I became superintendent. It is preparing the whole child for a life of success. Many people are abandoning fine arts. No, no, no uh, band and course and things of that nature. We are increasing in fine arts because we believe that's important for children to want to be at school, to be a part, and to grow them responsibly. The whole child is important. We're not, we're not, we're not investing in robotic students that cannot play a song on the piano or something of that nature. We want the whole child to be impacted, and we're doing that in the Walton County School District. Impact. Our, our board um, partnered with me to make sure that we increase the funds that we're getting in those areas to make sure those students have the instruments. We've increased new instruments in all of our schools, increased funding for visual arts, K-12, for the purchase of equipment, supplies to support greater exploration art, digital curriculum resources for elementary and middle school. Uh, we are adding, we are adding course, we have, this is not public knowledge yet, but we have course at Freeport Elementary, we have course at Freeport High, and I am adding course at Freeport Middle School this year. So we're <laughs> we don't want our students to go lacking anywhere in our county. Ensuring excellence. Talking about retention and recruitment. New contracts issued, um, when we talk about uh, instructional personnel, our new contracts were issued prior to the end of the current school year to provide a sense of security. We want our teachers to know that we want to pay you the best we can. We have a great work relationship with our union. We got it done, settled, and ratified by Halloween. I understand that was the first time ever as well. We have a great working relationship. We're not trying to hide money. We're not trying to keep money from teachers. We are trying to make sure that they have what they need. Here's a fact. We have the highest pay rate in the panhandle up to step number nine. Up to step number nine. And that's because we know the value of teachers in classrooms. Our board makes sure that we together give everything we can to our teachers because that's where it happens. Our teachers this year, got a, and I demanded this, got a $500 bonus before Christmas. Before Christmas. Yeah, right before Christmas because of our A grade. Our ESPs received a $250 bonus in their ratification because of our eighth grade. We know the value of those who work in the school district. We enhanced teacher and ESP of the year program. Ms. John Kenneth, Ms. Ness, they are here. Our new teacher of the year. They, this is how we've done it. Thank you. They, they, uh, over $5,000, dollars over $5,000 we got our community to give to our first year teacher of the year. She came out of the classroom and put a plan together where I'd allow them to come out of the classroom and go all around the county and the state to gain knowledge, gain strategies, and help mentor new teachers. And she chose to stay part-time at her school and come to the district office 
and she's a science teacher, and our science scores went up by 13% in some schools this year. I don't know exactly, but I don't remember the uh, exact numbers that went up all the state, but it is phenomenal. Ms. Ness hadn't told me if she's going to stay or not yet, but she's our new teacher of the year. Our community members supported that. Uh, what we will do, they'll go back to their classrooms, and we're going to put in their classrooms state-of-the-art um, items, uh, things that they can uh, use and they'll become a model classroom in the Walton County School District. So we're excited about that. Uh, pop presence on purpose. What we do know is when students are out, they can't learn. What we also know is when teachers are out, the substitute can do what an experienced expert teacher can do. So we put together a plan, and our HR department worked with this diligently, we put together a plan that when teachers are not out at a certain period, a window of time, then the money we would spend on substitutes, we give back to the teacher. You hear that? So when they don't have a substitute, we give them money in their hands during that pay period. We call it POP, Presence on Purpose. A phenomenal, innovative idea, and people are asking us about it all the time. Uh, that's the total of our rates, 7.02% benefit. Education support will see that award experience step. 45 cent raise, $250 will be awarded for being an A student as a district as a bonus. <coughs> one year, one month ago, a tragedy happened at Parkland. Kept me up for weeks or months to carry the weight of knowing that something could happen like that on campus. Initially, I was very mad about it, the thought of someone wanting to hurt children. Our board, we've had three executive sessions on safety, is that correct? Three executive sessions on safety. Our board and me have worked hard to make sure that we do all we can to keep our children safe. Hired a new safety director, uh, Charlie Morris, he is here. Um, uh, we established a safety and security measure district-wide, including new safety specialists, mental health counselors. What we're knowing is there's people who come on a campus with the intent of harming children and have mental issues. We're preparing staff all over the county to deal with children that may have these mental challenges so we can stop um, the deterioration of their thought processes, intervene to help them and get them the help they need. Implement see something, say something. Alice training, that's the training where uh, in the old days when something happened, we hid <coughs> under a desk. We're teaching them to do what they need to do then because we have learned from other intruders. Um, FR, SRD, our board, and our sheriff, he was invited out. He think he had some legislative things to do tonight, but uh, we increased our SRD presence. We hired three more S. Two more, three more SRDs, and, and uh, we place them in places that we will not disclose um, because we want our children to be safe. We were already ahead of the game. Our board had decided years ago to have uh, SRDs, student resource deputies, at every school. Many school districts were struggling after um, uh, uh, February 14th last year to get SRDs when the governor came in and implemented and mandated through legislation that we have SRDs at every school. Our board had already done that even before I became superintendent. So I want to just thank our board for being forward thinkers. We're making it happen. We're uh, adding we're adding safety measures to make sure our children, children are safe. We have a Rave Panic app, utilization for active events. Uh, that's just, uh, that's all you need to know about that. But we know that anybody that needs to be responding when someone is intentionally trying to harm our children can respond immediately, immediately through this process. We've created a Walton County School District school safety webpage. Uh, I've asked children on our round table, uh, 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 Greg and, and the other seniors, what we could do about uh, safety in their school. Ask them, they know. Where are the uh, spots that we're volatile? They know. We we'll talk to them about that, we're helping them. This is Damien Kelly, he is a state, state school safety specialist. He has visited Walton County. He has talked about Walton County. He's talked about the things that we're doing in Walton County when it comes to safety. All right? This is Dr. Joseph Arardi. He was superintendent in Newton, Connecticut. 
when the Sandy Hook tragedy happened. I met with him um, the past two weeks to make sure uh, that the pressure of keeping children safe remains at the forefront of our minds. I have a plan, an additional plan I'm going to share with my board in the executive session to make sure that we are as hardened as the governor says, uh, Governor Rick Scott stated in his new legislation, we're as hardened as possible. At a time, uh, this is Max Schaefer. He is the founder of Safe School for Alex. Alex was his son who was murdered in Parkland last year. And I spent some time with him, learning from him, learning about his son, learning about the challenges. Know this, we're committed to student safety and well-being. We're committed to providing high-quality education. We're committed to preparing children for the challenges of life. We're committed to hiring and maintaining qualified teachers. And we're committed to wisely investing your tax dollars. And we're committed, certainly, to making our district as strong as possible, headed to a number one position in all areas. We're making sure that we're doing what's right for our community. That's our responsibility to you. That's our responsibility to our constituents. And we want, we're committed to making it happen. <clears throat> so in the end, I want you to know that you count on us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for uh, investing, coming, listening, being a part of this. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Apple, for the vision of this happening. Thank you for our, 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 our team members who are here to assist. Thank you for all of you who came to make this night a very special night. I did see one other person, as Ms. Apple makes her way for our closing statement, I did see one other person that I wanted to introduce. Uh, I didn't personally invite her, she heard about it. Uh, but she's a dear friend of mine. Actually, uh, I was, I was uh, working in uh, Okaloosa County as an assistant principal, and I had an interview with Ms. Joyce Kelly. And she hired me as assistant principal at Walton Middle School. She tried to sneak in on the back row. Will you stand, Miss Kelly? Long time educator and friend. God bless you. Thank you so much. I also saw some assistant principals that I did not recognize with the principals. Will you stand, assistant principals, please? anyone that I need to make mention of. All right. If there is nothing else, Ms. Apple? Mr. Hughes, I'd like to thank you. We'd all like to thank you for your visions and your leadership. So thank you very much. to our schools and our students. I know our students are always thrilled to see you. He is totally dedicated to our mission, which is preparing the whole child for a life of success. But then I also want to thank everyone who's here. A huge thank you. School advisory councils, you made a huge transition this year. We thank you for that. You moved from district advisory councils to school advisory councils. I'm extremely fortunate that we get to see you twice a year in this type of setting and thank you for our first annual State of the Schools and for attending. This is a great overview of what we're doing, how our students are performing, how our schools are leading underneath our leadership that we have with Superintendent Hughes. I also want to make sure that you realize we can't do this alone. You are our partners at home, you are our partners at school, so parents and community members, thank you for being here tonight. I also want to let you know that your feedback is extremely important to us, so I have to throw this out there. We have parent climate surveys. Don't forget to fill those out. We need your feedback. Our schools need your feedback. We're here for you tonight. If you have any questions, we have refreshments in the back. We also have a wonderful website. All of our schools have websites. Please reach out to us. Ask us questions. 
We're here for you. As Mr. Hughes said, we're a district of love and commitment, and we are thankful that we have incredible students and staff. So thank you very much. You can count on us. Have a good evening. Thank you.